So this brings us to the heart of the chapter, which is conservation of linear momentum. And thankfully, this is the easiest lesson. What we learned in the last few lessons is that the net force acting on the system of masses can be equated with the rate of change of linear momentum of that system of masses. So we can say that if there's no net force acting on the system, or if net is equal to zero, then the rate of change of momentum will also be zero. So we can write under this condition, dp upon dt is equal to zero if the net force is zero. Now what this converts to is that under such conditions, p or the linear momentum would be a constant. Now the interpretation of this equation can be that if there is a system of particles, then its linear momentum at any time ti or t initial would continue to remain same at any other time t final. So we can say that p initial or the linear momentum of system of particles at any time ti should equal to the linear momentum of this system of particles at any other time t final. And this is what we call the law of conservation of linear momentum, which says that if there's no net force acting on system of particles, the linear momentum of that system will remain unchanged. Now, what you need to observe is that this is a vector equation. So this law of conservation of linear momentum applies to each of the direction x, y, z in the coordinate system, which essentially means that a particle might have no change in linear momentum in x direction, but might have a change in linear momentum in y or z direction. So what you need to do is you need to observe if there is any net force in any of the directions x, y or z. And if there is a net force, the linear momentum will not be conserved. And if there's no net force, in any of the directions x, y, or z, linear momentum will get conserved. So to explain this further, take a very good example where you project a, a ball, let us say, as a projectile. So what you know from your earlier lessons is that it'll take a trajectory, which would be, let us say, something like this. It'll be parabolic, we know that. And we also know that during its trajectory, let us say the ball is over here at any given point of time, while there will be a force of gravity acting in the downward direction, but there'll be no force in the horizontal direction. So we can say that while the linear momentum of this ball will change in the y direction, but will not change in the x direction, primarily because there's no net force acting in the horizontal direction. So to further understand this a little better, let's take a small example where we have let's say a bomb and it has a mass m and then it explodes and it splits into two pieces and let's say one mass let's call it mass a moves in this direction let's say with the velocity v a and this is mass a and let's say its mass is equal to 0.4 times m and other mass which might be called b which is equal to 0.6 m moves in this direction at let's say velocity vb and it's given that the velocity va is equal to 2 meters per second and we've been asked to find what is velocity vb so what we can say is that the linear momentum in the x direction should remain conserved primarily because the bomb exploded on account of internal forces only and there was no external force exerted on the bomb. So we'll write the equation that the linear momentum in x direction initial should equal linear momentum in x direction final. So we know that initially the bomb was kind of uh, just sitting there, nothing was happening, it had no velocity, so the initial momentum was zero. And the final momentum was on account of movement of pieces A and B in opposite directions. So we'll take the linear momentum of first mass A, which would be nothing but its mass 0.4 m times its velocity, which is two meters per second, and we'll take it positive because it's moving in the right direction. And the momentum of part B would be its mass 0.6 m multiplied by its velocity VB. And while we can see that VB is in left direction and either we can take it as minus VB in which case the final value would be the absolute value 
But for now, we'll not put the sign because the sign will show up uh, in the final number which we get. So VB is equal to minus 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.6, which equals minus 1.33 meters per second. And you can see that the mass M has actually canceled off over here, and it's of little consequence. And, and you can also see that we've got a negative sign over here, which shows that part B actually flew in the left direction. So uh, we'll end this lesson over here and you'll get a better sense of law of conservation of linear momentum in X, Y and Z axis when we do a couple of numerical problems under the problem section.